everyone, Jennifer here, back with another edition of TV Talk. It's Thursday, and that means it's Legend of Korra Day. And this week's episode was Out of the Past. While her friends desperately search Republic City, trying to find her after she's been captured, Korra must connect with Aang in order to find a way to escape from her prison. Okay, things I liked about this episode. <laughs> hey, sorry about that. That was my cat. Um, she just wants to be in on the video, too. Um, okay, so first off, I liked that even though it's not directly one-on-one -on -one connecting like with like what Aang had with Roku in Avatar where when he had an issue and had to um, make contact with his past lives, Roku would actually, his spirit form would show, would show up and literally communicate with, with Aang and give him advice. Um, Korra does make a connection to Aang in this episode. Um, it's not the same as what Aang did with Avatar Roku, and I'm not saying that that's not going to happen with her. It may happen further on down the line. Um, but she does make a connection with Aang in this episode. And what she does is she actually sees a snippet from the past. And what I like about that is we're seeing an adult Aang. Um, we know that at in this vision of the past, Aang is 40 years old because he does say he's 40 years old. Um, we see an adult Toph. Um, which I liked. We haven't seen an adult. We haven't seen um, them as adults yet in the series that I am aware of. We may have in a past episode, and I just forgot about it. And we also see an adult Sokka in this episode, um, which is um, key. We haven't seen Sokka in this in the Legend of Korra. He's been mentioned. Um, Kitara has mentioned him. I believe that was her, her his sister's name. Um, she's mentioned Sokka. Um, we know for a fact that Sokka has passed away, just as we know for a fact that Aang has obviously passed away. If Korra is the Avatar, Aang had to have passed away. Um, Toph, um, she it hasn't been said, to my knowledge, what's happened to her. I'm assuming that because she is not there, we haven't seen her that she has passed away, but I know for a fact, um, due to some videos I've seen on YouTube, that Zuku is still alive in, um, Legend of Korra, and we have not yet seen him, so just because we haven't seen Toph doesn't mean she's not alive, she just could be somewhere else in the world of Avatar, um, but like I said, Sokka and Aang, we know for a fact they're gone. Aang, we know, is gone because Korra is Avatar. And Sokka, it, what Katara mentioned, that he passed away. Now, Suki, or wh whoever was um, Sokka's love interest, um, I don't know what happened to her. She has not been mentioned, and we have not seen her. I'm holding out hope that that means that she is alive and somewhere, but I'm not sure. Um, secondly, um... Even though it is mentioned in um, the last, epi last episode on When Extremes Meet, um, we know we're reintroduced to bloodbending. And this was a real shock for me because I was positive that Katara was the only one who knew about bloodbending. And I was sure she wouldn't have taught it to anyone. Now, I'm not saying she did teach it to anyone. It's very possible that the person who learned bloodbending picked it up somewhere else. Um, and there are actually two people in this episode, one in the flashback and one in the present time of this episode that can perform bloodbending. And I believe it might have been something that was picked up by the one and then taught by the other. Um, but they don't get into much detail on that. I'm hoping they will at some point. Um... But a, a few secrets are revealed in this one. I'm not in this episode. I'm not going to get into that right away. Um. Thirdly, we see how 
how much um, the one brother, um, the one who I believe is a firebender, I can't remember his name, um, how much he cares about Cora, because we see how concerned he is about her, how worried he is about her, and then there is a very, and I don't want to get too much into it, a very, in my opinion, sweet scene at the end of the episode, and if I decide to do a spoiler on this one, I will talk about that, I promise. I might, I might not, I'm not sure. Um, that just tells me that there's more to their relationship than what we're seeing or what they're even willing to admit because he's more concerned about her than anyone else um which to me is just it tells me there's something there and i'm like i said um it those of you who have seen cora all the way through probably know what's going on but um do not Please, because I haven't seen Cora all the way through. I think we're getting into the episodes I haven't seen yet. I only saw, like, I think the first half of season one. Um, so, um, and so for me, who hasn't seen um, the latter half of season one, then all of season two through four, and for people who haven't seen it yet, please, no, no spoilers in the comment section. Um, I have an inkling of what might be going on based on some videos I've seen on YouTube and some comments I've seen online that are comparing, that compared, um, Legend of Korra with another, um, show made by these same people, um, Dragon Prince, or The Dragon Prince, so there, a lot of people have been doing parallels with that, um, but, again, I haven't seen any of the episodes, I haven't seen much past this episode, so I don't know really what's going on. I'm just educating, making educated guesses in my head what I think is going to happen, so I really don't know. Hopefully, um, within the next few episodes, or even in season two, um, they'll reveal something. Um, but again, I don't want to get too much into but into it. But we we do see that we do we do see that level of caring, and it's more than anyone else in the group. And I'm gonna just leave it at that. Uh, I probably will do a spoiler on that um, at some point this week up like before the next episode of Korra is uh, TV talk on the Legend of Korra is posted. I'll probably do some kind of spoiler on that. I promise. Um, because I think there is something there I can talk about, and I don't want to really spoil the episode all that much. Okay, things I didn't like about this episode. Not much. Um, this was actually really good. Um, I would not have changed anything. I mean, really, even the person who kidnapped Corn, I don't want to say who it is, even though it was kind of revealed in the end of the last episode... Um, like, they, um, I wouldn't have done, like, changed that, because I think we all knew something was going to happen on that at level. Um, the, the thing with the equalists, um, I wouldn't have changed, and yes, hello. Um, there, there's just a lot that was going on this episode that I felt it was just, there, there was nothing I would have changed about it. Okay, feel free to check out my related avatar videos. And there's my cat again. She just wants to get in on things. Okay, my um my other Legend of Korra videos. And my other my other TV talk videos.
my other videos. Okay, quick reminder on my comment rules. Okay, before I sign off, a few things I'd like to touch on. First off, please be sure to leave your comments and questions in the comment section. I do love to read those. Um, feel free to follow me on Wattpad, Tumblr, Instagram, and Twitter. I do have my name for those four sites right there on the screen, as well as the pictures I use for the icons. Please note that all pictures seen within this video do belong to their respected artists. I own absolutely nothing. And the links for the any sites I mention in this video will be in the description section if that makes it any easier for you guys to locate me on those particular sites. YouTube subscribers, any of my videos that cannot be found on YouTube are on my Facebook page. Facebook friends, basically the same deal. Any of my videos that cannot be found on Facebook are on my YouTube channel. And to anyone who's interested, you can feel free to check out my Facebook group, Fanfic Corner. DreamWorks Dragons will be coming to an end in mid-November, and that means there will be an opening for a new TV Talk series on Sunday. And that means that you guys get to vote and tell me what show you would like me to do a set of videos on. Your choices are Horseland, Outlaw Star, Dot Hex Sign, and Inuyasha. Voting is extremely simple. All you have to do is write a positive comment and or like or love a positive comment on one of the four shows listed and whichever one gets the most votes is the one I'll do a set of videos on. Please keep in mind that negative comments and dislikes do not count as votes and if Inuyasha is selected I will do up through season one of the sequel as of the posting of this video. Voting will be until the 13th of November. 
Um, hopefully this will be the last time I've had to push that date back, but if it does happen again, I will let you know. You may vote as many times as you wish, but please keep in mind that in the event of a tie or no vote, I do have the final say. Also, for those of you um, watching on YouTube, I do have a poll for this set up on my homepage. Um, it's only a one-time voting thing per person, but you can feel free to go there and cast your votes as well. So far, the votes stand at one vote for Horseland and three votes for Inuyasha. However, you still have a little over a month left, so be sure to get your votes in and make your voices known. Okay, please like and share this video if you're watching on Facebook, or like and subscribe if you haven't already, if you're watching on YouTube. And as always, thank you for watching, and have a very nice day.